In this problem, we have a hollow sphere. So it's a basketball and it's rolling along the ground without slipping. And it runs into a hill and starts to roll up the hill. And of course, it slows down as it rolls up the hill because its energy is being converted into gravitational potential energy. I'm interested in the maximum height of the ball. So at that point, there is no longer any translational velocity to it. And let's just start to get some preliminary things written down to make the calculations more efficient down at the bottom of the screen. I have that the moment of inertia of a hollow sphere, it turns out to be 2 thirds mr squared. I also want to write down the expression for total kinetic energy of an object that is both translating and rotating. That's just 1 half times the mass of the thing times the center of mass speed squared plus 1 half times its moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass times the rotation rate. And the third thing I want to bring up is the rolling without slipping condition. If an object is rolling without slipping, by a clever change of a frame of reference, we're able to figure out that the speed of the center of mass is going to be equal to the radius of the rolling object times its angular velocity. So it's a very familiar formula, but it means something different than the old V equals R omega for the tangential velocity at the edge. This is actually the translational velocity of the center of mass happens to be related by the exact same thing, R omega. And the way we're going to use this is to substitute for omega at one point in the problem. So let me just go ahead and solve for it right now. Okay, let's get into the problem. I want the maximum height of the ball if the hill is rough. So I mean there can be no slipping between the ball and the hill. And what this means is that by the time the ball reaches its highest point, not only is V equal zero right here, so that the ball can no longer be moving translationally, but omega is zero as well. There can be no slipping. And that means all that rotational kinetic energy and the translational kinetic energy, it's all been turned into gravitational potential. So I'm ready to write down an equation. I'm talking about energy conservation here, E initial equals E final. And my original energy is one half m times the center of mass velocity squared plus one half moment of inertia about the center of mass times omega squared. And all of that has been turned into gravitational potential energy. There's no more motion in the final state, not rotational or translational. So that's going to be an mg times what I call y max in the diagram. Now notice that ordinarily you would measure the gravitational potential energy at the center of mass. But what I did in this problem, just because it, it was a nicer way to draw it, is I measured by calling zero the ground level and and then the bottom of the ball at the end of the problem I called y max so that gives me exactly the same change in height as if I measured at the center of mass it's just nicer to look at it that way let's start cleaning some things up so I have one half m v center of mass squared plus one half moment of inertia that's two-thirds mr squared times omega squared, but it's rolling without slipping. So that's V center of mass over R all squared. You'll notice the R's cancel when I square that equals mg y max. And it turns out the m's cancel as well. So if you look up in the original problem, this information was unnecessary. Mass and radius for the ball. Okay, cleaning things up a little bit on the left hand side. I just canceled some twos in the second term. I have one half V center of mass squared plus one third V center of mass squared equals G times Y max. And that thing on the left is three six plus two six. So that's five six V center of mass squared equals G times Y max. And just a little bit of algebra and I can solve for Y max. Y max is going to be 5 V center of mass squared over 6G. And when I plug in the numbers for V center of mass in the initial state, that was 3.5 meters per second. And of course, we all know what G is. And when I plug in the numbers, I get 1.04 meters for the maximum height. Part B is interesting. Um, we're going to say that suddenly when we hit the hill, the surface becomes frictionless. So this is like perfect ice on this hill. And what this does is it makes it so there's no way for the rotation rate to slow down. 
So what would ordinarily cause the rotation rate of this object to slow down on a rough surface, if I want to get into analyzing the actual forces and torques just very briefly, is that a friction force pointing parallel to the surface has to be exer exerting a torque in order to slow down this angular velocity. Incidentally, it points up the hill. But without any ability to exert parallel forces, there's no way for the surface to actually exert a torque and therefore slow down the rotation rate. So as soon as this object hits the hill, it just stays spinning at, the, at its original spin rate. It gets all the way up to its maximum height and keeps spinning at that original spin rate. And then it rolls back down the hill, coming back down the hill while rotating clockwise. So in the end, how does this affect the analysis? Uh, well, the rotational energy never changes. So if I write down E initial equals E final, I could be really thorough and write down the rotational energy term in the initial state. And then in the final state, it's going to stop and turn around, but it's still spinning the whole time. So I have some energy in the gravitational potential energy system. Plus, it's still spinning at exactly the same rate it was before because the surface can apply no torque because it's frictionless. And there, my rotational kinetic energy terms cancel out. And my masses cancel out of both sides. And I'm going to solve for y max. And this time, it's v center of mass squared over 2g. So that original speed, 3.5 squared over twice 9.8. And for my maximum height, I get 0 0.63 meters. Just making sense of this qualitatively, in the case of part A, I had a rough surface, and so there was a mechanism to convert the rotational kinetic energy into additional height. So you'll notice that my maximum height was higher in that case. In part B, there was no mechanism to stop the rotation and convert it into gravitational potential energy. It just kept spinning and sliding on the ice the whole time. So I end up with a lower height. And this represents just the translational part of the energy being converted into height instead of both types of energy.